Today on this episode of Does This Design Work, we are looking at designs for Nier Automata. One of these designs in particular generated a lot of buzz within the social media, and that design is the one for its main character, 2B. The director Yoko Taro has flat out admitted that 2B's design is meant to be very fanservice-y, stating, I just really like girls. And as bold as that statement is, it might mislead people into thinking that not much thought went into these designs. But if you've ever played any other Yoko Taro game, you probably know that a lot of thought gets put into their character designs, and Nier Automata is no exception, showcasing some truly interesting character designs. Before we begin, I just want to say that what we say about these designs is purely our opinions, as art can be interpreted in many ways. And as for spoilers, there are a lot in this video, although this time we kept it mostly vague up until a certain point, so I'll let you know when we get to that point. Now with everything said, let's begin. Oh well, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, and uh... And I think all Sundays need robots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's start over the video. No, no, this is a good place to start. Let's talk about- okay, we're, we're doing Nier Automata today, and let's talk about this big con- this big news story of this design. With Yorha Unit 2B. The B stands for booty. Yeah. <laughs> booty unit type two. <laughs> All right, so so it's hard for me to like thematically evaluate this design because I can't stop thinking about you know what Yoko Taro has said about it. Like, hey, hey, Yoko Taro, why did you design two uh, B this way? And then he goes, because I like cute girls. And it's like, well. That is the most pure and honest answer I have ever heard about this sort of thing. What was the name of uh, the spider from Lord of the Rings? Was it like Shelob? Shelob, yeah. Oh, see, see, she can be a sexy lady because Shelob in the actual Lord of the Rings uh, mythos can shapeshift depending on what she wants to be. Okay, so that's your excuse. All right, <laughs> and then everyone just went like. Just whatever. They rolled their eyes and are all like, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, let's start. There actually is some thematic stuff. So other than the blatant, like, sexiness all over the fucking place. Um, uh, you know, it's a black and white design. And yeah. I think, Yoko, like, other than the fact that, like, black and white kind of means death, I think Yoko Taro has flat out said in an interview that black and white symbolizes death in his games. Hmm. And 2B is a person that kills a lot of things. She is... The B actually stands for battle unit, I think. Can she actually be... Can it be said that she kills stuff, though? If it's not living in the first place? Uh, oh. that's a... That's a question that I bet it get, but that gets... That is a question that I bet gets asked a lot in this game. Because they have that mechanic where you just resurrect no matter how many times you die. Which is like, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, she uh, she only fights robots, so... Um, yeah. So, what do you think about the patterns on her, uh, hat on her incomplete skirt here? <laughs> well, other than that, like, incomplete part that <laughs> has really no purpose other than just cute girl. Uh, but yeah, but don't you think the design maybe, like, you think it may symbolize something, or do you just think it's there for style, pure style? Uh, probably just there just for style. Okay. Just yeah. to be fancy. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have, like, the symbol in the chest area, like, oh, we, it's, uh, the symbol of Yorha, and... <laughs> and also cleavage. And cleavage, just because, like, oh man, this is, this is, like... Next to some, like, God Eater designs, this is one of the most blatantly sexy designs for a lady character ever. Yeah. And, but you know what? I think, you know, they have the black and white thing, and, you know, it has enough kind of that style, like that magical girl, but dark anime style to it that, you uh, know, it's... I, I believe the actual term is Gothic Lolita. Gothic Lolita. Okay, yeah. That's a that's a style, and I think, I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the interesting thing with, like, the, um... The um yeah the the blind the blindfold the visor it's a visor it looks like a blindfold but yeah, oh, yeah. it's a visor yeah I want to take a closer look at that <laughs> so okay so th this is um 
I think Yokotaro has stated this in an interview, because there's a whole thing where it's like, all the battle units, all the field units, they have blindfolds, right? Yes. And all the operator units, they have the masks that cover their nose and mouths. Yes. And I think the reason he stated is because, like, uh, the field units don't see the truth. The operators don't say the truth. Don't speak the truth, I guess. That's rather ominous. Oh, yeah. Um, I wonder if he said that in an interview before the game came out. <laughs> I mean, I feel like when you start a game like this, you're gonna be all like, yeah, there's gonna be some twists. I just- and I just gotta get to them. Humanity on the moon has created these androids to fight. These- 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 <laughs> these stylish androids. I just want to point out, high heels. Yeah. You know, like, well, it's a robot, so it's fine. It's like the high heel is a part of their body. I bet it serves a purpose in the combat field. What possible purpose? Uh, it's kind of like, it serves the same purpose, like, of the wheels of a monster truck. It allows you to walk on different terrain. <laughs> that that makes no sense at all. I'm say All I'm saying is that 2B has monstrous legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay. Oh, boy. I feel like there's gonna be a bit more of this. This type of commentary. But you know what? I think, like, do you think the design is cool despite all the blatant sexiness? Yes. Okay. Well, with that said, I think let's take a look at our next design. <laughs> Alright, so this is... We haven't even talked about 2B's character at all. But, uh... This is 9S. Yeah, she's a 2B's partner, as many of you probably saw in trailers for this game, if you watch trailers for this game. Um, uh, he is... Yeah, this is unit... Do we... Did you already say what he is? Yeah, 9S. <laughs> yeah, 9S. Now, he's a scanner type. That's what the S stands for. So, he's more of field support and hacking. Yeah. And, um, uh, I guess compared to 2B's design, his design looks like it serves a pr purpose. Like, it looks like an outdoorsy design, like, uh, outfit, you know? Yeah, with, like, the coat, uh, boots. He has the backpack, too, like, yeah. just for carrying, you know, stuff, radios or whatever. Although I feel like that's most, all that radio stuff is done mostly within his construct, since he's a robot. Yeah. Um... I feel like due to the detail of his design, he looks like... I guess he looks less threatening than 2B would, if uh, that makes sense? Maybe, yeah. He definitely doesn't look as equipped for battle. Yeah. Um, also, like, something that's weird, so it looks like an outdoorsy, like, outfit from a more broad standpoint, but there's, like, details like the buttons here and the way the gloves look that maybe, like, it looks kind of formal also. Yeah. And I guess that does fit his personality. <laughs> yeah, he's... Very curious. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, he's very, like, I mean, like, in the fact that he's very, like, polite and stuff. Oh, yeah. Despite everything, you know, very Constant, sociable. Constantly calling 2B ma'am. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and also 21O. Does 21O ever yell at 9S for calling her ma'am? Um, I don't think so. Mostly just for him answering, like, yeah, yeah, sarcastically. Yeah, yeah. Sarcasm is prohibited. Uh, so, the S-types are a new type, and they're the only males among the Yorha androids. Oh yeah, because all the operators and the bow types, they're all ladies. Yep. The, do you have any idea as to what that means? Like, like what that, why that is? Because I can't think of it. They're probably all like, eh, let's just make guys now. Yeah, yeah, we have too many cute girls, we need to... <laughs> it's like when, uh... It's like when Nasu, um, uh, re it's like when, uh, people take over for Nasu and write characters, they're like, wait a minute, we need to have some males. We need to have some servants be historically accurate. We can't have all of them be Saber. Yeah, and that's the mindset of, I guess, the creators of Yorha. So, uh, yeah, I think this design's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Next one? Sure. All right. Okay, so the reason I have it so that it's her art and her face is because I read a very interesting post the other day on the individual face designs. I initially thought that A2 and 2B had the exact same face. 
but apparently there's subtle differences. And, and Really? Yeah. Because they even have the same mole under their lip. Well, I feel like that's just like, a lot of people say that's Platinum character designs, like Bayonetta also has that mole. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. A lot of female characters in Platinum games just have that in particular. Does Raiden have it? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think moles look good on guys. I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess it is kind of hard when your lower jaw is mechanical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, like, their eyelashes are different sizes. Um, 2B's lips apparently curve up a little bit while A2 is more flat the entire time. Isn't, isn't that because A2 is, like, less, like, cynical? Well, I think they're both kind of cynical. <laughs> yeah, but... 2B seems more like, uh, she smiled more than oh, A2. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 most definitely. That, she has that super cute smile at the end of round A. Where 9S is rambling off and then she's all like, shut up, you sexy person in a robot's body. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you interpreted that? Well, that's kind of like just, well, it's just more like her going, let's just enjoy the silence for a bit, because we're happy. Okay. Um, yeah. So, also, another reason I have this art is because, you know, there's a difference. I think the first time I saw A2 and she has the long hair, I'm all like, okay, that's because she's mysterious. A lot of mysterious characters have long hair. Yeah. And, like, long hair can be used to hide their faces and stuff like that. And that kind of goes into the whole motif of being mysterious. I know I thought that her personality was that she was just really quiet and miserable. But then, you know, you get to the scene where she cuts her hair off, and the first time she talks after that, she's the most sassy motherfucker ever. She's basically Kaine from the first Nier game. Yeah, more or less. She's sassy, she swears, she doesn't use, like, formal vocabulary because she's too busy saying fucking shit. And, like, and like I think the short hair really fits that attitude a whole lot more. It's like, it's like, her cutting her hair is, like, revealing her true colors to the player, in a way. Yeah. Also, it's a good red herring for the um, opening where you see A2 with, like, short hair and you think, Oh, it's spoiling all that stuff that 2B is gonna see. Like, you th like is the implication that A2 was, like, people thought that A2 with short hair was 2B? Yeah. Huh. I never, I always thought it was just... Actually, I, I guess I never really thought about that I was playing as I was playing the game. Yeah, because uh, they do look very similar when they're not where when she has her hair short and not wearing a blindfold. Yeah. Just and looks like a battle damaged uh to be. There's that amazing scene that happens in both route A but in route B, you know, an enemy goes, "You're number 2." And to be's all like, "Yeah." Uh she definitely looks like since she's a rogue Yorha unit, she doesn't do maintenance on herself a lot. Yeah, her, she looks like torn up in multiple ways, like I've always wondered if the stuff on her legs were, like, burns or, like, just torn up clothing. Uh, probably, like, uh, leggings. Yeah. Or, like, artificial skin that's, like, peeled off. Yeah, like, I thought it was, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, that yeah, artificial skin, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. And yeah, she definitely looks like she's been through some shit. And also, like, you can see there's a little dirt on her nose here, and that's just there the entirety of the game. Yeah. She's been through... Some shit. She hasn't taken a shower in several hundred years. Oh, man, I wonder if that's how long she's been active. Like, hundred years? Or, like, how long she's been active at all. I've always assumed that most of the androids have been active for, like, a hundred years. Like, like 2B and 9S. And, like, A2's been, like, active for much longer than that. Like, this like is... in the opening it says the fourth mach machine, 14th Machine War, and it's like, what the fuck does that mean? Does that it... mean Yor has been doing this for, like, several thousand years? It's like in 11,000 AD, so yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, that, like... But yeah, I'm, uh, like... A2's design is, like, one of my favorite just for, like... Just, like, she looks really cool and badass. And, uh... And I love the whole thing with the hair. Yeah. So, with that said, you want to take a look at our next design? Sure. Alright. Okay, so Operator 21O is on the left, and Operator 60 has her unique haircut on the right, but they both share the exact same outfit from what I can tell. Okay. All the Operators mostly look the same, other than the hairstyles. Alright. So yeah, the uh, Operator units are basically the support team back on base, giving the orders. Yeah. And, like we said, they have the veils over their faces. Because they don't speak the truth. 
Like, I've always wondered if they all, if all, if just operators, like, knew all the truth about Yorha all this time. No, I think it was just the commander. Yeah, but, like, there's, like, that one mission where I think 9S questions why he was sent after to kill certain Yorha units. And then 21O just goes, you're fucking treading on some dangerous ground, motherfucker. Uh, probably just, like, don't say anything, because 21O probably knew about, like, what happened with 9S previously. Oh, yeah, she probably did. Because, cause, like, as soon as he gets back on the field, he just automatically just responds to 21 -0. They don't really have a cutscene establishing her as the new operator or anything. Yeah, she's probably just used to it. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Makes 21 -0 seem more cruel than 2B in that regard. Or maybe she's doing the whole distance thing like 2B is by acting all cold. Probably. Yeah. Um... So yeah, their outfits, like, very much scream, like, uh, secretary or, like, uh, what, what would it be, like, a command crew? Like, uh... Like, like, you know those, uh, that crew that's always in the mecha shows back at base being all, like, readings are off the scale! Oh, as they're, like, at their computers yeah. typing stuff at, at random. Yeah, um... But yeah, yeah, they definitely give off that impression. Like, you know, there's cutscenes of them just going nuts on the computer, and I get that impression from them. Um, their outfits are also pretty sexy. <laughs> Show quite a bit of leg. So not only do we have, like, we have this part, and then we have, you know, the stocking part just covering, like, a, a, the uncovered parts of their body. Like, this kind of see-through looking stuff, and it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you know, sexy they, ladies. They also and have high heels, which isn't as much of a problem because they're not in combat. Yeah. So I like that 6-0, you know, she definitely, she has a cuter, nor childish kind of hairstyle, and, you know, she's def like, she's the polar opposite of 21-0. Yeah, 21-0 is all business, yeah. and 6-0 is more, like, bubbly and nice. Yeah, it's, it's weird. And, like, yeah, their hair, I guess the only thing you can really use to tell that apart is their hairstyles. You know. <laughs> like, 6 is doing it for, uh, looking good, and she's doing it for work. Uh, 21 is. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these designs are fine, too. And I really love the mask thing. Yeah, it adds, like, a bit to the design. Yeah. It also does, like, I feel like the masks also make them, like, look threatening. Like, all the Yorha butts. All the Yorha... I said Yorha butts. All the Yorha oh. robots. Oh, like, yeah, the, the butts look threatening. The Holy butts guess. look th Oh, God, scary butts. <laughs> Don't activate self-destruct. Oh my god, yeah, scary, like... Uh, as, well, I was saying, I think all the Yorha robots share a thing where they all look really, like, they all look kind of scary looking. Especially Ex later on. Oh, yeah. Um, well, anyway, I want to take a look at our next design? Sure. Alright. You, you say, you, it, is it because you said robots too much? <laughs> You influence me in, I... in the in the in the filthy way. All right. Okay. So, man, I fucking I I was surprised when I found the art for Yorha Commander, and I was so surprised I had to find a picture that I th think of most when I think of the Yorha Commander in the first place. Yeah. Because like this one makes her look like so sultry, you know? Yeah. Like, every time you're back at the bunker, it's in black and white. Yeah, and so you never really, until like a very later part of the game, you don't see her in color in anything yeah. other than monochrome. Yeah, so seeing the official art is jarring. So I look, so as soon as I saw this art, I did a bunch of research. Like, what is her personality like this when she's off duty? Is she ever off duty? And I've just found one thing where it's like, oh, according to 9S, she apparently doesn't clean up that often. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, 6-0, like, uh, tells him, like, yeah, the commander's kind of a slob when she's not on duty. Yeah, and, like, from what personality we've seen of the commander, this doesn't really fit her at all. Yeah. Just the pose. But he, she even has, like, one of those dominatrix whips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, yeah. Um, also, like, this... Her outfit's a whole lot more, like, sexual than I re remember. And I guess it's just because, like, she's mostly just, like, sitting still with her hands behind at her side or behind her back. 
Like, yeah. she doesn't give off the feeling that this art gives off at all. It's so weird. Yeah. Also, this art makes her legs look, like, t as big as her, like, head to torso. Well, I think that's for all the Yorha robots. No, no, like, her legs are bayonetta lo length. Oh, oh, you're talking about the length, yeah, I guess. I wonder if the character designer was just flat out a guy from Platinum. Uh, maybe. Because based on the mole and a couple other things, I feel like that'd make a whole lot of sense, like... Like, whoever Yoko Taro had for Nier and Dragon Guard just wasn't there for this game. Or maybe that person worked together with a Platinum artist. Yeah, like, one person would design one character, another person would design another. Yeah. Inter so. Interesting to note that the commander is wearing white, while all the other Yorha are wearing black. She doesn't look as evil, she doesn't look as, like, threatening as all the other Yorha androids, which is weird. Yeah. Maybe that's to signify that she knows everything that they don't. Yeah, she's not like a, a thing meant... She's not like a, a machine created to do something. She's a person telling those machines what to do. Yeah. You know. Uh, well, anyway, uh, this, this is a really weird art. Yeah, it doesn't really <laughs> fit what we see in the game. Uh, yeah. Man, an enemy, like... Like, you go through most of the game, and we both missed that terminal, which gives her, like, an enemy's backstory. Yeah. And I know there was a side quest, but I forgot what fucking happened in that side quest. Uh, which one? Was it, like, finding, like, A2's stuff? Yeah, and yeah, it's flat out just called an enemy's past. And it doesn't really, it kind of hints at stuff, but it doesn't really give you anything that yeah. you can... It's a, doesn't really tell you anything at all. Yeah. And it's like, she has this really cool-looking character design, but she hangs out at the Resistance camp for, I'm pretty sure, the entire game. Yeah, she doesn't do anything, like, even during, like, the attack. Yeah. Um, so, I guess the way this design looks, it definitely makes her look like she's, like... It looks like she's she's uh, in, like, desert combat gear, almost. Yeah, she definitely looks like the Resistance leader. Oh, yeah. So that's cool. And, like, it, it, this design is also really interesting to look at. Which is, like, there's a lot of stuff going on with the way her, like, pants are set up. And you got this pocket thing here. And she has what looks like just an AK-47, which I don't think you ever see in the game. Because I don't think that makes sense. No. <laughs> like, everyone's just using swords and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I think in that side story, like, flat out, there's, like, a line that says an enemy began to draw her sword or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like just for, like, this is, prom like, this is all, all the art we've looked at so far has been promotional art. And I think, like, how do we make this person look like a resistance later? Give her a fucking AK-47, one of the most common assault rifles seen in gaming and fiction ever. And also a hood and cloak. Yeah. Um, does she wear the hood when you talk to her? I believe or so. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so despite our grievances with her lack of backstory, uh, this is a pretty cool design. Yeah. Although this character, are, her feet are so tiny. Oh, really? Well, maybe we're, we've been looking at big monstrous legs from the regular Yorha too much. No, no, but look at and her... And that skewed our perceptions. Look at her feet. They are, they are smaller than her legs. Like... They, they are tiny compared to the rest of her. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Like, it could be just she's wearing baggy pants. Okay, I guess. I don't if know. You, like, if you want to see that. Like, feet like in real life, they're kind of smaller than legs. Yeah, but they, they just look so thin. Like, those, those look like very thick boots. Yeah, well, I'm at, yeah, I guess. I can't wait for Yoko Taro to reveal in a bonus pre-order art book that you can only get in Japan that... During the stage play. During the stage play. <laughs> yeah, throw that in there. That, oh, she lost her legs, so she had to replace her legs with child's legs. Or something. <laughs> Considering everyone in this game is an android or a robot, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. One of the first missions is like, why aren't you replacing your body parts? And he's all like, I feel like I would become less of what I am, you know? Oh, shit. It's the last piece of my of my original body. Yeah. So I just don't feel I'd be the same person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Davola and Popola. This is Papika and Coconut. <laughs> I said it before you could. Okay, fine. <laughs> but yeah, like you've like their names are very blatantly cute. 
Um, apparently in, uh, the Japanese version, they were just called, like, Devol and Popol. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, if you played the or watched anything about the original Nier, you would know that Devil and Popola are significant characters in that. Yeah. And, uh, like, they're also just twins in the Yoko Taro game, which is apparently a reoccurring thing in, like, Dragon Guard 3, Dragon Guard 1, and, you know, of course, the Nier franchise. Yeah. Um. So, uh, they're very cute girls, you can tell because of the flower in their hair. Is that a lunar tear? I think no, no, lunar tear is bigger than that. Okay. <laughs> you want to think every flower in these games are fucking lunar tears, right? <laughs> well, lunar tears are like the only thing we see. They're the only plant ex- besides the desert rose. Yeah, I guess. Although the, I don't know what a desert rose looks like. I can't remember it. It was from that one side quest, but I don't remember getting a good look. Yeah. So. I guess in comparison to their near gestalt designs, these are more like, you know, modern looking clothing. Yeah. But they're also kind of like, like, I guess they kind of have, like, it looks like they're, uh, what am I, what's the word? Uh, like, they kind of look like, I guess, desert-like as well? Maybe just because uh, of just this, these parts of their, uh, designs? I guess, like, I, I get a more resistance vibe just because of, like, the knee pads and boots. Yeah, and they are, like, technically a part of the resistance, um... And yeah, there's a lot of just, like, I really like how the colors are in these designs. Like, they have black and white, but also, you know, the red. Yeah. And I just love, you know, the placement of the colors. That looks really cool. I also like the symmetry with, like, the openings on their, like, the, like, cut on their shirt is, like, this opposite. They have opposite wristbands. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a cool thing. Um, so you can tell that Devola is the more, like, uh, uh, frisky one because of her hair. And then Popola is the more demure one because of her hair, because it's more kept, and, and Devil is, like... It, it's like that trope with, like, certain guess, twin characters yeah. in anime. <laughs> or just dual characters in general. Like, they do have a kind of a Devil uh, Papika thing, because, you know, Papika has messed up hair, too. And she's more outgoing, and Kokona is more reserved. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of comparisons you could draw to those designs from Flip Flappers. Also... I was gonna say Hisui and Kohaku. That's a... You know, Hisui and Kota- Kohaku's designs are pretty weird, because they both have the exact same haircut. And, though I guess Kohaku has a thing where, like, like Hisui wears a proper maid uniform, while Kohaku just wears, like, an apron on top of a kimono. Which I guess kinda refers to her more outgoingness, but I don't really know. So yeah, these designs are pretty good. Yeah, and they, you know, they look very... They, they, they're adorable. <laughs> They're, yeah. <laughs> You're not really going to add on to that. You're just going to leave me I in love, awkward. I love giving that awkward silence to le- to make you regret your words. Oh, God, that's... Oh. They're great designs. I love these girls a lot. Anyway, next design. <laughs> All right, so this is one of the main villains of the game. A bunch of robots try to, like, uh, have sex with each other by just ramming each other with their metal parts. But then, and then they decide to say fuck it and form, like, a zygote out of their own bodies. And out comes naked Sephiroth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I like... But I like... I think these characters look better than Sephiroth. <laughs> you just don't like Sephiroth I also, because Final I also, Fantasy loves I also him. was just very blatantly looking for a reason to shit on Sephiroth. You don't like Sephiroth because Final Fantasy loves him. Yeah. And also that fi- well, anyway, um, back to- before I go off on the thing, um, so Adam is, cons- is like, the more superior of the brothers, and he's also, like, constantly looking for knowledge about humans. Yes. Like, down to his very name, he, like, takes a lot of inspirations from, like, the Bible. Like, his name is Adam, he eats- him and his brother eat fruit to gain knowledge. Yeah, 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 like, he just- yeah, yeah, there's a whole thing where, like... But I've always, like, Eve is, like, in comparison to Eve, like, Adam is very actively looking for this knowledge, and he's willing to yes. do anything to get it. He wants to emulate humans so badly. Mm-hmm, that he even fucking has that thing in his boss fight. Uh, so yeah, he's usually wearing the glasses, like... Like, this is the... the, the 
Like, Adam and Eve, they change clothes throughout the game. And this design is, like, the final one you see him in, because he's in, like, his full, like, professor-student uniform. Yeah, he's, like, really fancy-looking with glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, like, this really interesting environment for the, for the boss fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like... Like, you just, like, I just... You know, I just love that this design, like, he just looks like a student. He looks like a... He looks like a scholar. And that's very appropriate, considering what his character is. Um, also, he has just that handsome, like... The Bishonin. Yeah, he has that Bishonin appeal for all for all you ladies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just, you're, you're going silent again. <laughs> well, I'm actually thinking of anything to talk about. Okay, okay. I appreciate that. But, I don't know, any other thoughts on the design? Um, just like the gloves, like, one seems to be longer than the other. Yeah, it's a little weird. I wonder if that's in the game. Yeah. Well, anyway, want to take a look at his brother? Sure. So, Eve doesn't care as much about knowledge. No, he's just there because his brother's there. Also, their fighting styles, like, Eve is a whole lot more wild and crazy with his fighting. Yeah, you can kind of tell that from, like, his, like... N not wearing a shirt, his tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a kind of, like, a certain kind of shonen character. Just a, like a, like, just a, like a badass kind of shonen character. Yeah. Who goes shirtless. Maybe Kenshiro kind of. Mm, I was thinking more like Zoro. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His hairstyle kind of looks like, reminds me of that a little bit. Um. So yeah, Eve is, like, less curious than his brother. Just tagging along like a little puppy. Yeah. And, like, yeah, and he just doesn't, like, he only wears clothes. He only covers up his crotchal region at the request of Adam. And that's why he just has the pants and the shoes. And, yes, his name is Eve. Yeah. He even asks Adam, why am I named Eve when we're brothers? Oh, yeah, he says that? Yeah, he's like, should we be named Cain and Abel instead? Oh, really? He just flat out says Cain and Abel? Yeah. Wow. And Adam's all like, no, Eve's fine. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to carry that weight, uh, brother. You're gonna have to deal with uh, my shenanigans. You burst from my rib, therefore you're Eve. Yeah. Okay, so I might bring a picture of, of this later, but I guess I forgot to like when he goes crazy. Um, uh, this tattoo grows and covers like half of his body. Oh yeah. And then you see the symbol of that cult from Drakengard that no one but Clemps spotted, and it's like, what? Why is this here? Oh, no, Pat spotted it, too, and he was angrily asking Clemps, like, What does that mean? And Yoko Taro's just like, Oh, he just found it in a book. Okay, that's actually cool, though. And then that tattoo has some meaning, like, Oh, I read this book about these fucking psychos. From another world. From another- Yeah, like, it might as well be from another world, even though it's just, like, a billion years in the past. No, no, it's literally from another world. Don't you remember? The Dragon Guard One Dragon came from a portal. Yeah, but wasn't that like wasn't that a time portal? I don't know. I, I thought I remember reading it was a time portal, but I could be wrong, and it would make sense considering how like what happened to fucking magic in like fucking Tokyo. <laughs> eh, well, watch, well, watch uh, Mr. Clemps's uh, near videos for more info. Yeah, but also play the games because they're awesome. But anyway, yeah, this design is, it's, we know what it conveys, it's pretty good. Yeah. Alright, so this picture is up here because we want to take a look at, um, uh, one of the, uh, standard machine designs, because they're, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, So, so most of the machine designs don't really deviate much from this. They have the same basic torso, and nearly all of them have the exact same head. Yeah, and like... The head that, like, I talked about how, like, um, uh, the black and white thing of, uh, the Hora designs make them look like bringers of death and stuff like that. Like, in comparison to machines, like, they look a kind of adorable. Yeah, especially the little stubby ones that just hop around. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, and no matter how, like, extreme their designs get, they all retain the same thing of having this cute little head on them. Yeah. Which has a very good reason. Yeah. Um, 
Oh man, I think I remember seeing a picture, and I don't know if it was fan art or not, so I didn't put it on here. But it's like a picture of like, just multiple machine heads, and as you go from left to right, more of the skin comes off. And there's like a creepy looking mouth underneath. Oh no, that the mouth is in the game. Oh okay, let me when, put it... <laughs> during the end of uh, Route A, when the attack happens. Okay. They, um, and they start eating. Yeah. I'll just uh, put up a picture of that later, by the way, for you viewers. But yeah, there's like a huge contrast between just the cute little eyeballs and the cute little eyeballs with the opened mouth. Yeah, Yoko Taro said that he wanted to make the machines, like, just have the eyes and nothing else to see if we could empathize with them if yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. have a face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, wow, that's very interesting. I actually didn't know that. But yeah, I guess that does make sense. Okay, so one more thing we have to talk about is, and maybe I'll put pictures up of those designs later, because I didn't get them. <laughs> um, uh... <laughs> Um, is that the robots, like, uh, there's a whole plot point where, um, uh, they're all desperate. They're all very desperate to emulate, emulate humans. Yeah, like, they, they start forming their own societies. S some of them start wearing clothes, wearing makeup, uh, drawing, like, uh, bow ties on, like, father units, or wearing, uh, ribbons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they wear all these different outfits in order to, like, try and individualize themselves. Because since all ro- all robots share, you know, the cute little head in order to, like, make themselves feel more individual. They gotta dress themselves up. Like, the desert-wielding ones will wear, like, cloaks and masks. Yeah. The forest ones, since it's the forest kingdom and their warriors, have, like, armor and helmets. Yeah, 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 and they have, like, spears and weapons and stuff like that. And, like, there's also ones at the carnival, and they're all dressed up as clowns, and they're all trying to have fun, fun, fun. <laughs> And they're all like, let's be happy together. Yeah. <laughs> and then you hit the square button. And that ends horribly, you monster. Yeah. The world is so cruel. Okay, so we've previously stated that uh, all the robots share the same head headpiece design. And uh, there are a couple special enemies that actually don't have that. However, the first one we encounter that doesn't have that at all is a friendly robot named Pascal. Yeah, Pascal is the leader of a peaceful village out in, like, the forest that just wants to be by themselves and live in peace. Like, oh, like, look at, uh, I was about to say her, look at him, he has, like, a, a flower, he's all like, let's, let's, uh, let's be friends. Like, even if you attack him, he won't fight back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, Pascal's design is so, like, interesting just because of how different it is from all the other robot yeah, designs. Yeah, he doesn't share the same head, and he, even his limbs are, like, shaped differently. Yeah. Like, it looks like he was built this way. Like, a lot of robots start in that phase where they just have, like, where they're just hopping about in that little torso. But Pascal looks like um, uh, he, he started out with this, uh, like, he was built this way. Yeah, like, Pascal... It's probably from a very, very early generation of robots. Do you think that's what it is? Do you think that's why he uh, he's like that? Uh, most likely, because um, initially the robots didn't look like uh, Emil until after Emil started wrecking them. Oh, really? That's why you think? Or is that, like, the actual reason? Yeah, their, their heads are based on Emil because they thought Emil was a god when he was wrecking the aliens. Oh, wow, that's very interesting. So that, then it would make sense that, yeah, you can tell from this design with that knowledge that, yeah, Pascal's a very early model. And, like, I think, yeah, there's some dialogue where Pascal Flout mentions, like, I've killed a lot of fucking androids before I'm, uh, I decide to be peaceful. Yeah. And I've, and she, and he, uh, he the, the he, reason, okay. Pascal is voiced by a woman. Yeah. In both versions. A very high, like, a very sweet-sounding lady, and, um, uh... Yeah, but Pascal identifies as male, and all the characters whose identity is important to them as well just kind of, they don't make that mistake ever. They just go, oh yeah, you're a he. Yeah. Very interesting plot point that I wanted to mention. Uncle Pascal. Yep. Um, yeah, so this, that, this design is now a whole lot more interesting now that I know that stuff. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, anything else you need to say before we move on? Um, not really much. Like, just... A contrast to like how different Pascal is from 
all the other robots you see in the game. Yeah. So, uh, truth be told, I don't really remember most of the other boss designs. I think they were all mostly just spheres. Yeah, except for the one in the ocean, most all of them are spheres. Yeah. But this design is probably, if not the best design, if not the best and most unique design of all the robot bosses. Yeah. Or the machine bosses, I should say. So this machine's name is Simon. Yeah. You think it's pronounced Simone, or...? Uh, I have no idea. Alright, I'll just say Simon then. And this is clearly a robot that has dressed herself up. Yeah, she lo she's dressed to kill. Like, <laughs> it looks like she just ripped the, uh, the, the stage cloak from the opera house and just made it into a dress and a veil. Even, like, in her, like, backstory you can find, she just kept, like, taking parts and putting them on her to be more beautiful. Yeah, so she can impress that fucking jerk-ass machine. <laughs> oh, Jean-Paul. Yeah, oh, God, he's such an asshole. Um... She has also, like, a masquerade mask, which, you know, you can probably, like, say, oh, she probably looked through some information about past human lives, and it's all like, oh, people wear, uh, wear masks at uh, masquerades, and they look pretty, and stuff like that. And I need to look beautiful. Yeah. Also, I don't know if she has eyes, but, like, I wonder if the mask, like, gives her eyes, or, like, gives her more of a face in general. Um, possibly. Yeah. Oh, also, a minor little detail, but there are dead androids. Uh, minor little detail, huh? Yeah, there, there's, like, a few dead androids strewn around her dress and, she... <laughs> and, and hanging from her headgear. Yeah, she is willing to kill in order to look beautiful. I will use dead android bodies in order to fucking decorate myself. And make myself sexy. Uh. <laughs> and crucify them. To, yeah, oh. to, to decorate the stage. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a very cool, like, just visual way to demonstrate, like, what this robot is about and what she has done and what she's willing to go through to do it, you know? Oh, yeah. So Yoko Taro's always had a thing with designs where he probably tells the art designer, okay, I want you to, to make a character with this personality. And then he go, and then th then they make the design, and Yoko Taro looks at it, he's like, yeah, yeah, pretty good. By the way, the personality is actually the opposite. Man, like, so this is Yoko Taro, the creator. <laughs> <laughs> this is Yoko Taro, the this, creator of the game. This is the story writer. He's a fucking god within the game to go, I will guide you, my robots. <laughs> but, but, but no, no, this is just a mask that Yoko Taro wears yeah. uh, whenever he's out in public. If he's not using a sock puppet, he's using this mask that, yeah, it's, oh, this, it's, it's this amazing. Is, this is actually Emil. Yeah, this is Emil. Uh, Emil's a character from Near Gestalt. And um, uh, this is him, like, he used to be a boy, but then he fused with the body of his dead sister, which had, like, fucking this as the head of it, and then he became... The mask. <laughs> he had a body a two, uh, attached to that as well, but that kind of blew up. Yeah, kind of, yeah, 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 more or less. Um, and yeah, you already said earlier, like, the robots kind of based, like, uh, their head designs, their later head designs, off of email. Yep. The reason for that is when the when the aliens that created the robots attacked, Emil made several hundred copies of himself to fight. Yeah. And wrecked them so hard they thought he was a god, and designed all their future robots off of him. You ever look back at that uh, art CG and look at all the different like types of Emils that were made? Like the one attached to the tractor. Yeah. There's also one that's just a bunch of tentacles, like he's an octopus. It's so goofy. Um, Did you also notice that aliens look like penises? Oh god, is that- I never noticed that. One of them even has a vein. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're going to fuck the Earth. Both figuratively and, and literally. <laughs> the big Getty star. Um, uh, anyway. So, Emil's face, like, let's talk about just what it looks like. It looks fucking like Jack Skellington. It looks fucking- it looks like, fucking creepy and evil. Like, he cannot emote at all. The most he can do is just move his mouth, like, underneath the lips. Yeah, he can make it chomp a little bit. 
Like, that's it. Yeah. But but he's still one of the, like, best characters in the series. Oh, oh, yeah. And, um, uh, I love the whole thing. In Nier Automata, he can insert his head into vehicles, and he has done this multiple times. And, uh, yeah, we have this here, where I'm, uh... Like, I love this because, like, there's a scarf here, and it's almost like this is the upper half of his body, while these are, like, supposed to be, like, his legs. Like, he's, like, like the machines themselves, he's trying to look like a person. Yeah. And you can imagine someone like Emil would be self-conscious of that, because, like... like he, he used to have a body, but yeah. it's gone now, so he, now he's just trying to find one. Yeah, he's just a creepy skeleton face. How did he make that, anyway? Uh, get into the... do this? L like, that, that, that body has no arms. How do you make the scarf and put it on? I think he just... I'm just going to say he used magic. Okay. Because, like, there's there's that question where it's like, does he still have that magic? And then you, when you finally get to that point, you know, detecting old world magic and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, and that was my answer to, yeah, that's probably how he did everything. He just used some magic. Yeah, probably. Man, that, that moment, just detecting old world magic, is like, now we're at the point where magic is in the game. Like, everything, all the weirdness... No, every... magic is back in the game. But yeah, but it's like, everything up in, like, 99% of the game is fucking, te is, is weird techno stuff. And every instance of it, even the stuff that just looks like magic. But, th but then, like, you get that confirmation, like, this time it's magic, bro. Welcome back to Nier Gestalt. <laughs> we both love this head a lot. Yeah. And thus, let's move on. <laughs> it's it's the mascot of the series at yeah. this point. It's like, it's hard to deny how iconic it is. Uh, so these are characters, and... <laughs> these are pods 153 and, one, and 042. Okay, so I think 153 is the male one, right? Yes. The one with the male voice, at least. The, oh, the white one. Yeah. And 042 is the black one with the female voice. Yes. Um, a uh, quick question. Did you ever, uh, pet the pods? Did you ever get that to happen in the game? You can do that. Yeah. Okay, so it's really fucking hard to do, alright? So, you have to go to your button setup in the menu, and then you have to just demap one of the buttons to nothing. And then you go into the game, and you just mash that button that does nothing. And then once you mash it so hard that your fingers hurt, the 2B, 9S, and A2 will pet the pods, and they'll have dialogue based on the intervals of when you pet them. Oh. But, like, like, they'll both be all, like, detecting pleasure, and stuff like that. And kindness appre appreciated, and stuff like that. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah, it's like, well, considering what I tell you, it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, what, like, I just discovered that because I didn't want to accidentally do the debug menu that uh, you got from the DLC. And I just made sure a button just didn't do anything, and then I accidentally just triggered it one time. Like, fuck, it's, it's one of the most hidden fucking features ever. So yeah, uh, pods... Anyway. <laughs> uh, the pods, uh, follow you around and, like, basically act as, like, a secondary weapon. Yeah, they're pretty much, like, in Nier Gestalt, there was a book that shot spells, and Nier Automata, there's these robots that shoot lasers and bombs and grapples and shit. And yeah, they fulfill the same function, just with, t just in a techie way. Um... So, these... So they're characters. They're the most yes. mono they they speak in a monotone voice throughout most I think throughout all the game. Like I don't know if they ever really show emotion other than when they state their intentions in those scenes. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, they're always very monotone like mission objective is go here. Yeah. Um A2 should state her intentions. Fuck off, pod. <laughs> 30 seconds have passed. A2 should state her intentions. <laughs> And then suddenly, and then like after the third time, like Pod One Five Three suddenly emotes like, "Girl, you better state your intentions, or else I'm gonna blow a gasket." Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a literal one of those, considering I'm a machine. But, but anyway, um, so these designs are mostly are pretty inhuman. Yes. But there are some human parts, and mainly the hands. But which ones? There's two sets. Uh, well, the more human-looking ones, I guess. The larger ones, right here. And that's always was so, like... 
Like, do they have instances of kind of body language with their hands? I feel like they do, oh, but I'm not sure. I believe it's during when they're trying to communicate. Yeah. And when they communicate, like, the uh, these things, like, kind of blink when they talk. Yeah, they blank and, like, pop out to show that the one is talking. Yeah. Um, do you think their colors mean anything for the story? Um, no, it's probably just to differentiate their model. Yeah. Because you see other pods that you can pick up, and they look different. Yeah, also, like, you know, they're both, you know, it's black and white thing again. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. I mean, they're they're interesting designs, but... Yeah. And I guess the point is that it's really hard to read anything from them. They just look like machines that perform a function. Yeah, they're, they're just there. Yep. All right, want to take a look at our next design, then? Sure. After this point, it is very heavy spoilers for the game. Oh yeah, we've been spoiling a couple things, but these are... If you haven't finished the game yet, finish it now. So, um, honestly, I don't really know what to make of this design. So, this <laughs> is the avatar of the terminals. Yeah, it's it represents pretty much the... I guess the lead AI of the machines? I don't know, because they've been playing the machines and Yorha. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I guess they're like... I mean, the Yorha themselves are revealed to be machines. So that's why I kind of make that, like... Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, they're behind everything. Yeah, they're the... They're the most evil in the game, and then they have this super poetic death. Um, yeah, I should say, there's usually two of them on screen at a time. Yes, one is Alpha, one is Beta. Until they start multiplying near the end. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, whenever I saw, when I first saw the hologram in the game, I didn't really, I never knew what to make of it. Like, I thought it was like, when I saw two of them, I'm all like, is it a Devola and Popola thing? I mean, there are like, there is a twin thing going on, but they also just look the exact same. Yeah, this is like the third set of twins in the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love those twins. Adorable twins. Uh. That speak with, like, grown-up man voices. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I guess, like, I don't know, I guess the colors kind of make her look... Like, is it meant to be, like, a Red Queen thing, where it's like, you have this little... Man, I can't believe I'm making a fucking reference to the Resident Evil movie. Um, where, like... <laughs> oh, man, not in a million years. But is it, like, a thing where it's like, the innocents kind of contrast with what they do? I suppose. Like, it. they definitely made a human avatar to, like, emulate humans. The same as everything else in the game. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a very consistent fucking thing going on in this game. Um, yeah, and I guess, like, they kind of look like just young, adorable girls, I guess. But they... But they're evil. But they're evil. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, like, other than that, like, it's a very, like, simple design that... Even as I'm staring at it on the screen, I like I haven't figured it out. Like if there's any like thing other than just the whole innocent girl motif. Yeah. So. That, that's probably it. Yeah. So part C begins, and then everyone's all like, "Let's just fucking go on a rampage and destroy as many machines as we can." Like, uh, at this point we're past the spoilers. So Adam and Eve are dead. Yep. And the machines are now in disarray. Yorha's all like, oh yeah, we can, like, make a full offensive and gain a major advantage in this war. So all the Yorha units that are uh, combat models, like, don these uniforms. Yeah, and, like, first of all, they kind of have some, like, like, it, like, the outfits, you know, they have this boob armor, and, like, they're also, like, they're still sexualized a little bit. Kind of shapely. Yeah, 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 that's the word. Um... And, like, they have, like, these, like, thigh-high boots for the combat uniform. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah. Um, other than that, you, you, um, uh, you said they look like Nazis? Well, they have, like, the Nazi helmets, like, built in <clears throat> to the helmets. Yeah. Like, Darth Vader's helmet is based off, like, those old, like, World War II German helmets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's what that looks like. They look like fucking enemy super soldiers in, like, Wolfenstein or Killzone. Yes, which are, again, based off the World War II helmets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, especially when their eyes are glowing red. They, yeah. They just look so evil. Like, out of all the Yora designs, this is the most evil. Yeah. 
Although, like, I found that if you give 2B the outfit and then just take the helmet off, she looks like, she looks badass and cool. And less evil, kinda. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Like, it's, it's mostly just the helmet. Yeah, and just, like, it's all black and, like, they're all dark colors and stuff, like, just, like... Like, suits like this that obscure the face and have, like, those kinds of helmets are, are never worn by the good guys. Yeah. Um, like, okay, if you want, like, went to a random person and, like, who, who do you think this... What does this design look like to you? They probably think, um, uh, wow, that looks like a fucking Dark Lord. <laughs> Like, this looks like it's some kind of Stormtrooper design? Yeah, yeah, and it kind of has, like, you know, it's like, it's a very classic kind of design thing where, like, just a black helmet that kind of looks like the Nazi helmet. And, like, like, you know, in Star Wars and, yeah. uh, and other things. I mentioned a couple like, things earlier, just, but I forgot. It's just ingrained into culture. Yeah, like, this is, like, this is evil. And this is when, like, really bad things happen. So, it's appropriate that this outfit appears when it does in the story. Yeah. Like, when you're fighting people dressed like this, it just feels appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, it, like, it looked like super soldiers and just everything just exudes so much evil. Uh, Brett, what do you think about the designs overall in Nier Automata? Well, they're very... A lot of them are very well designed. Like, and fit the characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, the Nier and Drakengard series have very good designs working for it that also, like, tie into, like, the character's story. Yeah. Like, Yotaro as a director, really cares about the character designs, and, like, you can look on, like, the, wik the wikias and stuff, and you'll find that often, more often than not, he's been in directly involved with how characters turned out in their appearances. And some of them, like Emil, have become so iconic, they've become the mascots of the series. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, like... Like, even, uh, also, like, let's address the sexuality a bit. Like, despite, like, you said that, you know, a lot of designs do fit the characters. Would you say that they do that despite, like, the sexualized nature of a lot of the designs? Yeah. yeah. And in some cases, it can, it makes the, it, some of them help the game become popular. <laughs> Yeah. Like, most people, like, probably wouldn't have heard of Nier Automata as much if it weren't for, like, oh, man, 2B looks kind of hot. Yeah. 2B is, like, like just just the news surrounding 2B's design just makes her one of the most inter Just makes her design one of the most, if not the most interesting design within the entire game. Um, with that said, uh, what are your... Do you have any, uh, what are your favorite designs out of this batch? Hmm. Uh, I would have to say, like, um, in the context, I would say, um, 2B, Pascal, because of just how unique Pascal is compared to the other machines. Alright. And Emil, just because that, the, the Emil, the Emil face just works on so much. Just, it's just, it's very strong, very strong impression. Yeah. Like, yeah, I also just, like, I really love the Emil design, too. Um... I really love Devola and Popola for mostly just... Like, they look... They they look good. They look good. They look adorable. It's a very personal preference, I guess. Like, I guess if you throw aside story stuff, like, yeah, I really like Devola and Popola. Um, like, I like... Like, when I think of the designs of Yoko Taro games, I think I usually... Like, I like all of them. Like, I guess the only one that's really kind of underwhelming is the Red Girl one. Yeah... Like, there's a lot that goes into Yoko Taro's designs and the games he directs, and that's very evident. Yeah, like, even back to, like, the first Nier with, like, characters like Kaine. Yeah. The fact that they put... Like, the fact that there was so much effort put into Papa Nier, like, as opposed... Like, both Papa Nier and Brother Nier got pretty equal treatment as designs, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Although the time skip, it was more obvious with uh, Brother Nier. Yeah, All yeah, they yeah. did was give Papa Nier the... What the, what would you call that stuff on his face? The under the thong that he the metal thong I guess that he wears over his eye I don't know, <laughs> the, the weirdest eye patch ever. Yeah. So uh, with that I think we said all that needs to be said. Yeah. 
Um, uh, if you like this video, uh, please consider commenting or liking. It's very encouraging. Plus, if you have a design that you would like us... If you have a game or an anime that which designs you would like us to look at in the future, I hope I worded that well, um, please let us know. We're um, uh, very interested in that stuff. And with everything said, uh, thank you for watching.